All right, so we were talking about scattering theory last time, and so we can think in terms of a probability current, which is 1 over mu real part of pi star is followed by rad pi. So this gives us a current, and if for a wave function of the form E to the i k z, this gives us a j, which is 1 over mu real part E to the minus i k z, then h bar over i grad is i k z hat E to the i k z, E to the i k z's cancel, and I forgot to multiply by h bar and divide by i, and altogether what we have is h bar k over mu, which is p over mu, which is essentially the velocity. So the incident wave is coming in, say, from the left wave packet with, let's say, true velocity v. Now, to get the scattered wave, we have to remember that the gradient operator is r hat p by the r plus theta hat over r p by the theta plus p hat over r sine theta p by the v. And so now we take the scattered function. Remember, in general, we're saying that the wave function is E to the i k z plus f sub k of theta and v, E to the i k r and r. So this is our scattering wave function, which I think someone can usually call v sub k of r. He has a superscript diff. That's because in French, scattering is diffusion. So diff is for means scattering. Anyway, so the scattered one is we can put in all of these gradients, all these components of the gradient, but the one that counts is the one in the r direction. So this is going to be 1 over mu real part, and then this would be f star E to the minus i k r over r. And we'll have here r hat, the r derivative of E to the i k r over r times, again, f. And this gives two terms. When the derivative acts on this, you get something that's 1 over r cubed. But when it acts on this, and then you put in the h bar over i, altogether what you get is h bar k over mu 1 over r squared half the value of f k of theta and g squared. The other components also go as 1 over r cubed. That is to say, go as the one that I left out, because there's an extra 1 over r in these two. And you then get a 1 over r squared in here, so they go as r cubed. So this thing is r hat over, so this is what j actually. So that's the scattered wave that is going out in all directions. But with an amplitude that varies with theta and phi. In many cases, it doesn't vary with phi. In particular, if it's potential spherical symmetry, it won't vary with phi. 
Okay, so what's the cross-section? Well, the incident flux is some constant times J incident, which is some constant times H bar K over U. And our formalism is that the number coming out into a particular solid angle would be the same constant times J dot DS, and so that would be C, J in this R direction, the surface area is R squared D omega, and we've seen that that is this here, and so that would be then C, H bar K over U. The R squareds cancel, and you get F, K, K, and G squared D omega. And this then is the incident flux times the cross-section, the differential cross-section times D omega. The incident flux is C, H bar K over U, sigma D omega. So if you compare this with that, you see the C, H bar K over U and the D omega cancel, and you just get sigma of theta and phi, which most people write as D sigma D omega. I don't know why most of you use this notation. Anyway, it's F, K of theta and phi times the value squared, so that's the value. The sub K is a convention one could equally well call it F of K, theta, and phi. It certainly depends upon energy of the angle. Okay. Any questions? All right. Let me go back to the actual equation that we're talking about, and it's minus H bar squared over 2 U Laplacian plus V of R acting on some phi is equal to some E phi. And this E we're going to say is H bar squared K squared over 2 U times phi. Now you see we've got H bar squared over 2 U everywhere, so it makes sense to write V as H bar squared over 2 U times U, and then this equation is minus Laplacian plus U phi is equal to what's left, which is just K squared phi. Or bringing the Laplacian over to the other side, we have Laplacian plus K squared phi is equal to U phi. So this is what's conventionally done. It's frankly not all that smart from the point of view of physics, because it's minus Laplacian that's the positive operator. So it might make more sense to write it as minus Laplacian minus K squared minus, in other words, just to throw a minus sign in front of everything. But I guess people don't like minus signs, so they write it this way. In any event, this operator here is the famous operator, and Laplacian plus or minus K squared has various means functions that give us delta functions. And these are famous means functions. The one for just Laplacian is minus Laplacian on G is equal to delta. That G is equal to 1 over 4 pi R. And in fact, I'm leaving out all the arguments here, so let me say that this is R minus R prime is delta Q plus R minus R prime. And these are vectors, and this is Laplacian on R. And in this case, if K squared is equal to 0, then G of R minus R prime is equal to 1 over 4 pi R minus R prime. So this is just a Coulomb force law. 
For the case of um, plus or minus case where there are different solutions, um, one of them is a Yukawa potential, but the one we're interested in now with the plus k squared is going to be essentially an e to the i k. It's going to be like this, but it's going to have an e to the i k r over r prime. But before going to that, let's just suppose that we have uh, a solution to this. Uh, a solution like that, then what we can do is we can write um, we can write our solution as um, as uh, phi of r is some phi zero of r plus an integral g of r minus r prime um, phi of r prime u of r prime p q of r prime. And uh, the reason why this works, for as long as g is the Green's function, is that when we act on the left with Laplacian plus k squared on phi, we get Laplacian plus k squared on phi zero. And I forgot to say that phi zero of r is a solution of the free field equation. In other words, phi zero is e to the i k dot r. Um, and it could be e to the i k z. And then we get this plus an integral Laplacian plus k squared acting on g of r minus r prime, p of r prime, u of r prime, d cubed r prime. This gives us a delta function. This gives us zero. And so we have delta of r minus r prime. And um, phi of r prime, u of r prime, e cubed r prime. And of course, the delta function just gives us then uh, u of r, phi of r. And so, in fact, we have a solution of this equation which also plus k squared phi is u phi. So we can always write the solution this way. And by the way, this is this is a uh, an example of a general rule when you have a differential equation. You can write the general solution as a general solution of the homogeneous equation. That's this solution, plus a particular solution of the inhomogeneous equation, and that's that one. And so that's our solution there. Now the question is, what's this Green's function? And there are two of them. We can write in p plus or minus, and if we just use r instead of r minus r prime, it's minus one over four pi length of r. So it looks just like this. But then there's another factor. And the other factor is e to the plus or minus i k length of r. And so that's the solution. That's the Green's function. And by the way, when I was a graduate student, I remember hearing Schwinger say Green's function. I must have said it a hundred times. And um, every time I wonder. about the grammar involved, but that's the right grammar, actually. Other professors call it the green function. And um, that's possible, but it you know, makes you think the thing is actually green. Um, anyway, well, let's just check that this works. Well, plus and I g plus or minus, well, what is it going to be? It's going to be. Uh, it's really the divergence of the gradient acting on uh, minus 1 over 4 pi r e to the plus and minus pi k r. And so one possibility is that 
both of these guys act on this. Another possibility is both of these guys act on that. And then the other possibility is that one guy acts on this and the other one acts on that. So what we get here then is E to the plus or minus 5 to the R for plus and minus 1 over 4 pi R minus 1 over 4 pi R for plus and minus 5 to the R. And then 2, Brad acting on minus 1 over 4 pi R dot Brad acting on E to the plus or minus 5 to the R. Well, the first one, we know this gives us delta of R. That was what I wrote down here. This is the thing that you know about from electrostatics and electrodynamics. And since it's delta of R, we can drop this term. We can set R equal to 0. And that just gives us unity. So this is delta Q of the bar. The next one, there are various terms. Since this only has R dependence, we can just write this as minus 1 over 4 pi R. But then it will be R cubed, D by DR, R squared, D by DR, and E to the plus or minus 5 KR. So I'm writing the plus and the square is my function using the formula that we used before. And then the last term here is minus 1 over 2 pi. And then we have D by DR and 1 over R. The gradient of these are in the R direction, so we don't really need a dot product anymore. E to the plus or minus 5 KR. And so all of this is delta Q of R. This particular one then is, this derivative brings down a plus or minus I K, plus or minus I K. And then there are two possible derivatives. You can differentiate this one or you can differentiate that again. What that gives us is minus or plus I K over 4 pi R cubed D by DR of R squared E to the plus or minus I K R. And then this one, this derivative gives us a plus or minus I K. This one gives us a minus 1, that to the minus 2. And altogether what we get then is plus or minus I K 2 pi R squared E to the plus or minus I K R. And now you see when you differentiate here, the derivative on the R squared is going to give a 2 R. The 2 R changes this to 1 over 2 pi R squared. And we have minus or plus E to the I K and the base factor. And then this is plus or minus. So the derivative acting on this term cancels this term. And the only thing that's left is the derivative acting on this term. And that gives us delta Q of R. And it's a plus or minus, let me look at my notes, it's plus K squared E to the plus or minus I K R over R. So then if we remember the green function is minus 1 over 4 pi times all of that. Let me see, I'm just going to have a 4 pi loose here. Yeah, I left the 4 pi out of my notes here. Okay, so altogether, in other words, this is delta Q of R minus K squared G plus or minus R. And so, indeed, the equation is the plus and plus K squared on G plus or minus of R. So, we can indeed derive this equation. And so, this is the solution. This thing is called 
These are called the Helmholtz equations. Well, I should say this is called the Helmholtz equation, and these are the Green's functions for the Helmholtz operators. Okay, so that means finally that our scattering amplitude, P, K of R, is then the incident wave. Oh, we just walked out the door. P, V, I, K, Z, plus an integral, P, Q, R prime, G, well, it's G plus 4 minus P1, P plus U of R prime, and then V sub K of R. K labels the prime. All right, so that's our scattering amplitude. No, that's fine. It's a solution then of this equation, which is also, it's just a positive energy solution of a full Schrodinger equation, Heisenberg equation, stationary state Heisenberg, stationary state Schrodinger equation. Okay, but now what we want to, oh, by the way, why did I pick G plus from the G minus? Well, it's, if you, if instead you used G minus and you formed a wave packet and you did the stationary phase, you'd find that the G minus solution was an incoming wave rather than an outgoing wave, and you don't want incoming waves. So this is the outgoing scattered wave, and now we've got this factor there, which is, which involves P, V, I, K, R minus R prime, literally minus 1 over 4 pi, R minus R prime. Okay, now, thanks. Now, we're looking at this, which occurs in here. We're looking at this at values of R, which are, in other words, the picture is, there's a beam coming in from the accelerator, there's a target here, and then we have a detector out here, and this is a macroscopic distance. In the old days when Fermi would sit doing his calculations at a table and have the beam coming across the table, the distances were inches or feet. These days it's more likely to be, well, it still can be inches or feet, I guess, certainly feet, feet or yards. But anyway, it's a macroscopic distance, and so this denominator we're going to approximate as minus 1 over 4 pi R, but now in the exponential we have to be a little more careful. We can't just replace this by R. Instead, we have to write R minus R prime. What is this thing? This is the square root of R squared minus 2 R dot R prime plus R prime squared, all these things being vectors. Well, once it's squared, you don't need to keep in mind that it's a vector. You factor out an R, and this is the square root of 1 minus 2 R hat dot R prime plus R prime squared, and there's a 1 over R, because when you pull out the R squared, there are two R's here. One makes this an R hat. And now if you expand this, you get R 1 minus R hat dot R prime over R, and I'm going to drop the last term, R prime squared over R squared. And so this is then R times R minus R hat dot R prime. Now R prime, on the other hand, is something that's integrated, weighted with the potential, so this R prime ranges over microscopic distances. It's the range of potential. And so this thing is E 
is I K R minus R hat dot R prime. So that's our approximation for this Green's function. And so the scattering amplitude, B theta of, I should say B theta of R, is then E to the I K Z plus an integral P cubed R prime. And in fact, if I pull out the minus one over four pi, excuse me, allergies for all these diseases. And in fact, I can pull out an E to the I K R. And now what we have left is I K, and in fact, minus I K, R hat dot R prime, U of R prime, and then P of R prime. Right. And sometimes it's useful to write R hat dot R as U. Now, if we compare this with our other expression for V, namely V equals E to the I K Z plus F of K of theta and P, E to the I K R over R, what we see is that our scattering amplitude, F of K, and F sub K of theta and P is minus one over four pi, integral D cubed R prime, P to the minus I K dot, not K dot, it's K, I'm going to write this R hat, R hat dot R prime, U of R prime, P of R prime. Or not, well, C, if C is V, this is just V of R prime. So this is V. Okay, so this is our expression then for the scattering amplitude. Okay, so now we're going to discuss an approximation introduced by Born, because they say introduced by Born. I mean, I can't imagine that there weren't mathematicians who worked this out before Born, but anyway, his name attaches to it. So we have V sub K of R is equal to E to the I, let us say K incident dot R. In other words, we've been saying K incident is K times Z hat, and if we chose another direction, we just call it K incident. Plus an integral D cubed R prime outgoing root function Okay, so that's our expression. The Born approximation consists of saying, well, what we can do, we have an expression here for V K, so we can take this expression for V K and just stick it in here. And when we do that, what we get is E to the I, K I dot R plus integral D cubed R prime, G plus R minus R prime, U of R prime, E to the I, K incident dot R prime. And then we get a second term, and the second term is an integral D cubed R prime, D cubed R double prime, G plus R minus R prime, U of R prime, G plus 
all crime minor fraud, double crime, U of R double crime, V sub K R double crime. So that's the way you can do it. And, of course, you can continue further. You can say, I'm not satisfied with this. I'm going to take, I'm going to replace this term with these two terms. And then you get something that's even longer. And since we only have a certain amount of blackboard space in this room, I'm going to skip writing the third one down. We can draw pictures of this. This amplitude, then, is for, is the possibility that there's this wave packet going in, in this direction. And the detector somewhere, if the detector is actually along the beam line, then this term would be contributing. Otherwise, if this is the target here and the potential only has a very short range, in fact, I'm drawing it much, much too big because it goes as much as stopping. We have a detector out here. Then what happens is the particle comes in and then hits the potential somewhere at R prime and then scatters from there using this Green's function. And then in the next approximation, you can say, well, it can also come along, scatter here, or another value of R prime. And then it can go over here and scatter again at R double prime and then come out and go to the detector. So there are, so that's sort of a pictorial interpretation of what's going on. And that tells us then that if we replace all of these Green's functions by what they are, namely minus 1 over 4 pi R, E to the I, K R minus R hat dot R prime, then what we get is the G scattering amplitude in this one approximation is then the first term is minus 1 over 4 pi D cubed R prime E to the minus I K, and I'll just use his notation, U dot R prime E to the I K incident dot R prime. And so this is the first one approximation. This is this term here, or it comes from this term here after we factor out the E to the I K R over R. And you can see that this is then, we can call K U to be minus 1 over 4 pi in the online notes. And this is E to the minus I K sub D dot R prime plus I K sub I dot R prime. And I left out the U of R prime. And this is what we're doing. We're using this term as the first one approximation here. And so this is then S1 sub K K to the T. This first approximation is minus 1 over 4 pi. And integral D cubed R prime E to the minus I. And it's K, he calls it K diffusion. It's K scattered minus K incident dot R prime times U of R prime. And I left out the U of R prime there. So this, so in other words, it's the Fourier transform of, it's the Fourier transform of the, of the potential minus 1 over 4 pi integral D cubed R prime E to the minus I K dot R prime U of R prime. Where K is equal to, let me just call it as K, K 
pay out minus pay in. Okay. And then the cross-section, well, keep in mind that U, that originally we said B is H bar squared over 2 mu times U, so U is 2 mu over H bar squared B, and so the scattering cross-section, sigma A and theta and P, also known as P sigma, P omega, is then equal to F K of theta and P squared, and so that's going to be the absolute value squared of this Fourier transform, but U is 2 mu over H bar squared, so this is going to be 4 mu squared over H bar to the fourth, but then a 1 over 16 pi squared, absolute value squared of integral D cubed, and now we can drop the primes, D cubed R, E to the minus I, K dot R, U of R, absolute value squared, and canceling these fours, it's mu squared over 4 pi squared, H bar to the fourth, integral D cubed R, E to the minus I, K dot R, U of R squared, and big K then is K out minus K in, that's what is involved here, so it's a Fourier transform of the potential, and sorry, I've already taken out the factors, and so this is actually the original potential of the, that is to say, a switch from U to B. Okay, so this is our expression for the cross section. Now, let's see, what we want to do now is express the instant beam in terms of, express the instant beam in terms of, not simply a, not simply a plane wave, but write the plane wave in terms of spherical harmonics. So we're talking about, so these are the eigenstates of the Hamiltonian, this P is relative P, actually, and this mu, of course, is the reduced mass, and the length of P is, of course, square root of 2 mu E, and these functions have, in the product, 1 over 2 pi H bar to the 3 halves E to the I, P dot R over H bar, that's my way of writing that, and of course K is P over H bar. This is boring you with all of this. We're going to be using states K, which are H bar to the 3 halves P, and H0 on the state K, of course, is H bar squared K squared over 2 mu K, P on K is H bar K K, and the inner product of K and K prime is delta of K minus K prime, and that's also delta of P over H bar minus P prime over H bar, and that is H bar cubed delta of P minus P prime, which is H bar cubed P prime, 
and uh, that makes sense because k or h bar to the 3 has times p. Um, what we have then is g. Because of this delta function relation, we have the integral dq k, which k, k is equal to 1, and uh, we also have the r k is equal to just 1 over 2 pi to the 3 halves times e to the i k dot x k dot All right, so those are our uh, the review of the notation and you go to wave number instead of momentum. All right, now what are what are these states of a free particle where we choose to make H0 L squared and LZ uh, diagonal. In other words, these all commute with each other, and instead of using these states, which are eigenstates of Px, Py, Pz, we want states that are eigenstates of these three operators. These states we can call them phi 0, KLM of R, but it turns out that they're the square root of 2k squared of the pi j sub l of kr by ln of theta and t. Now, you see this j there, you know that means it's a Bessel function. Normally, there are, I mean, there are two kinds of Bessel functions. There are the good kind of Bessel functions, j l, and the bad kind, j sub l. These are to be avoided at all costs. Well, I can't even spell a void. I'm so spooked by the best of um, the, the, the cylindrical vessel functions are nightmare functions. Uh, but the spherical vessel functions, because of the spherical symmetry, are very simple functions. And in fact, if you let rho equal kr, then j sub l of rho is minus 1 to the l, rho to the l, 1 over rho, d d rho to the L on sine rho over rho. Okay, so that, I mean, compared to a cylindrical vessel function, this thing is a kitten. And, um, and uh, so these, these are the functions that we have here. And they're quite nice functions. Um, the inner product of two of these states, so phi zero KLM, phi zero K prime F prime M prime, this would be when you take the inner product, you're going to get a two over two uh, K K prime uh, pi. Integral zero to infinity JL of K R JL of K prime R R squared dr times an integral d omega of uh, Y L M star of theta Y L prime M prime theta T. Well, you know these guys are all the normal. And in fact, the Bessel functions with this normalization give you delta of k minus k prime, delta L L prime, delta M M prime. So these are exactly um, what we would uh, want. This could have been written k squared squared of two over pi, and that would make the k prime, k, k prime a little more transparent. The um, completeness relation is zero to infinity dk sum on L and M. So sum L equals zero to infinity. Sum M equals minus alpha L P zero KLM P zero KLM uh, is equal to the identity operator. So that's the the um, that's the 
story for these, these other, this other set of states. Now, what are these like uh, near the origin? And, um, well, the amplitude near the origin is going to be R squared, J sub L of KR squared times the uh, YLM squared. PR D omega. So that's the amplitude of the probably finding such a particle, particle in such a particle in such a state in that region. Um, now very importantly, J sub L of rho as rho goes to zero is effectively rho to the L over two L plus one factorial. Double factorial. Uh, the important thing is the rho to the L. Um, I guess we can sort of see that here, because if all of the, actually I don't see it, P by the rho, if it acts on the signs all the time, we get a one over. Rho to the oh, actually, I can see it now. Imagine this thing is an infinite series, a small rho. The first term is one. So all these derivatives I want to say all the derivatives are zero. That doesn't help us, does it? Anyway, it's a theorem, so I'm not, I, I don't have any good proof of that, I'm sorry. Um, but let's see if I can prove it at least for the very lowest one, J0. J0 is um, sine rho over rho, so it's of the order of 1, which indeed is rho to the 0, so that works. Maybe we'll do J, J1. J1 is going to be rho. Over rho, PD rho of sine rho over rho. And so this is just one. Um, so that is cosine rho over rho minus one over rho squared sine rho. And um, the leading term cancels. Um, that is to say, cosine is 1 minus rho squared over 2. So we have that over rho minus rho. Uh, Rho minus a third rho cubed, is that how the sign goes? Or is it a plus? I don't think I'm going to need this. So. Um, all right, so the leading term, the one over rho term cancels. The next term is minus rho over two from the first term and then plus 1 over 3 factorial uh, rho there. Anyway, it goes as rho. So the theorem we've checked it for the two most important cases. <laughs> All right, anyway, that's a theorem. What does this tell us then? This tells us that this function here, the small rho, is, 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 is very, for small rho, it's important only when um, rho is less than the square root of L times L plus 1. So that's, that's roughly what this is telling us. And, and, so, and rho is equal to kr, so that means 
So that means this thing is important only for R. I wanted to say R, not R. R less than 1 over K square root of L, L plus 1. Okay. So that's the, the, the area here. And that's the region where it's important. And, and uh, so there's an impact parameter B sub L of K, which is 1 over K square root of L, L plus 1. And this thing, by the way, is roughly L over K, which is roughly, which is exactly H bar L over H bar K. So this is the angular momentum over the momentum. And this, of course, is the radius. So it makes sense that that should be um, a, uh, a moment arm, so to speak. So the state is basically uh, affected by, by that. And let's, let's just see why that's relevant. You see, this scattering amplitude over here is going to be an e to the i k uh, the difference i k out minus k in dot r prime times u of r prime. This u has a short range, and if we expanded this then in terms of uh, plane, in terms of these uh, spherical Bessel functions and YLMs, then uh, the the region we'd only want to integrate out. Well, the important region here would be out to uh, basically L over K, and um, uh, if the potential doesn't extend out to L over K, then the L partial wave is going to be insignificant. And but the one that always will count will be the S wave. And in fact, in the early days of nuclear physics, they were doing uh, low energy scattering. And um, so K was small. And um, what they found was um, that. Uh, the S wave was, was dominant. Okay, so let's let's look at the other kind of asymptotic behavior, I mean, not at short R but at big R. Now let's rho go, let rho go to infinity, and J sub L of rho is approximately one over rho sine of, and this is this is a more sophisticated expression than the one at at, at, at uh, rho near zero. It's it's basically that all the J's look like J1, or is it J0? Look like J0, but J0 with a phase shift. And the phase shift is minus L pi over 2. And that's quite a phase shift, because L is an integer. And uh, so that's a big, big time of phase shift. Okay, so what is the asymptotic behavior of one of these phi zeros? Phi zero of KLM of R, then, as R goes to infinity, it becomes a minus uh, a square root of 2K squared over pi YLM of theta and phi. And the reason for the minus sign is that we're going to do something funny with this sign. We're going to write it as two exponentials. So in other words, this thing is 1 over IKR because of the sign, right? Uh, in fact, 2 IKR e to the IKR minus I L pi over 2. That's an E. Minus E to the minus I K R plus I L I over 2. So that's our expression for the sign. And so what we get introducing the minus sign is we get we write this as E to the minus I K R um, E to the I L 
apply over two. In other words, we take the second term of the physical minus sign and then minus EVIKR times E minus I L pi over two, and then all this is divided by two I K I. So that's our expression. Minus the square root Y L M and then one over two I K R times this expression here. And so this looks like an incoming wave plus an outgoing wave. And they differ by a phase of pi L. Now, there are famous expansions of EVIK dot R in terms of these spherical vessel functions and spherical harmonics. So let's look, first of all, at the incoming wave state, which is 0, 0, K. This is then one over two pi to the three halves EVIKZ. And we can also write it as, we can write EVIKZ as E to the I K R cosine theta. And we see that LZ on the stage, 0, 0, K is going to be zero because LZ generates rotations about the Z axis. And there's no change in this state when you rotate it about the Z axis because this is momentum in the Z direction. So that one is equal to zero. And if we use this closure relation over here, this one, now I'm going to have to do some erasing. The closure relation gives us, this is the incident wave, 0, 0, K, integral 0 to infinity to K prime, sum on L from 0 to infinity, sum on M from minus L to L, phi 0, K L M, phi 0, K L M, 0, 0, K. And so in as much as this one has M equal to zero, these things have to be in this sum here. We only have 0 to K to K prime, sum L equals 0 to infinity, and the only M that survives is M equal to zero. So it's phi 0, K L 0, phi 0, K L 0, 0, 0, K. That's because 0, 0, K is an eigenstate of LZ with eigenvalue of zero. The actual coefficients, in other words, these numbers here, are ones that are just an exercise in math methods. And let me give you the answer. The answer basically is that E to the I K Z can be written as the sum L equals 0 to infinity, I to the L, square root of 4 pi, 2 L plus 1, spherical bus to function K R, Y 0 L of K M G. So in fact, the numbers that we computed, in other words, sorry, this part, when you take the inner product with R, gives us the J L and the Y and a factor, and then this part gives you the rest of the factor so as to give that expression there. 
Now, why L0 is only a function of theta and its square root of 2L plus 1 over 4 pi times PL of cosine theta. This is the Legendre polynomial, which, along with the spherical vessel functions and the YLM, these are a graduate student's best friends. So, if we use the PLs instead, in other words, just use this relation, plug it into there, we get EVI KZ is equal to a sum L equals 0 to infinity I to the L 2L plus 1 J sub L of KR My library is R case for some reason. PL cosine theta. Okay, so this is our expansion of the plane wave in terms of the spherical vessel function and the nice vessel functions and the Legendre polynomials. Any questions? Remember, I have chocolate. Okay. Well, let's get back to the equation that we started with, namely this equation. Now, let's think of it in terms of eigenstates of L and M. Well, I'll just erase the important part. By the way, we've had a lot of drudgery today. Let me just mention an amusing clip I heard. One of the principal commentators on financial news for NBC for 45 years was Irving R. Levine. And maybe 35 years ago, or 40 years ago, when he was a young reporter, NBC told him, you really ought to drop the R from Irving R. Levine. And Levine said, he'd rather drop the B from NBC. Anyway, he died at the age of 86 of prostate cancer. This past week, I guess last week. Anyway, so does the state of medicine. Very expensive, but not very effective, except for vaccines. And then the crazies tell us that vaccines are not good. Anyway. All right, back at the bench. Phi's, let me just write this. Phi's of KLM of R. We're going to write it as R KL of R. And a Y LM of theta and T. And then, as usual, we're going to write that as U of K and L over R of R Y LM of theta and T. And let me just check on something here. Did we? We've specialized here. We're considering the case where the potential P of R is actually a function only of the distance between the particles, which I guess is what we've been saying pretty much all along. So now the U is a solution of, it's essentially just this equation, but since we're using the Y LMs, what we'll have is minus H bar squared over 2U D2 DR squared plus L L plus 1 H bar squared over 
2 mu r squared of plus v of r on u of k and l of r is equal to h bar squared k squared over 2 mu u k l of r. The stuff that I've skipped here is that, of course, v squared over 2 mu is minus h bar squared over 2 mu Laplacian minus Laplacian on y l m gives us l plus 1 over r squared y l m. And so the minus Laplacian hitting the y l m part here and then multiplied by h bar squared divided by 2 mu gives that term. And then minus Laplacian on u over r, which is what big R is, is minus 1 over r squared e by dr of r squared e by dr of u over r. And that's minus 1 over r squared e by dr of minus u plus r u prime. And that gives us minus 1 over r squared minus u prime plus u prime plus r u double prime. And altogether, that's just minus u double prime over r. And so the minus Laplacian on u over r is minus u double prime over r. This is the u double prime and the minus sign. Then there's a 1 over r that's everywhere and we multiply it through by r. So that's our expression. And then we have as a boundary condition at the origin, and I must say, I mean, this is, of course, what we expect. But I guess remember when we were studying potentials, bound states of a spherically symmetric potential, we said, well, that this u is certainly going to be 0 except possibly for l equals 0. Well, here, what we're dealing with is states that are of positive energy. And so they're not normalizable, and they're certainly not concentrated near the origin. And so that's why this equation holds, this boundary condition holds for all l. Let's see, we're pretty much out of time. I'll just notice that what we're talking about here is, of course, a potential in a v effective of r, which is v of r plus l, l plus 1, h bar squared over 2u r squared. So this is the centrifugal barrier. And what it, let's see if we have a nice graph. Well, it's just going to look like that. That's the l plus 1 over h bar squared over 2u r squared. And then the v of r may make this look like that. For the positive l cases, for l equals 0, in fact, the thing would look like that. All right, I think we'll quit here. And I'll try to get through a lot of this next time. And Mark, whatever you want. Are there any questions? So I'm going to do the rest of Cohen-Hanuji's treatment. And then, as an example, scattering of nuclear physics. And then some scattering for identical particles. And then I guess that will be enough. Well, let me just bring it. We'll do a little bit more. And then 
move on to other topics. So it's planned. So let's see. If you want to turn this off, we need to click on the... Click on...